Hello, today I will be doing a video on Flamecraft. This came out in 2022. I just got it uh, this past Christmas. It was gifted to me, and I actually just pulled it out for the first time a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, and played it uh, by myself as three players just to learn how to play. Um, hopefully, I mean this isn't a kind of game I would play with my gaming buddies but it is something I would play with my family so hopefully I can get my wife and daughter to give it a try but let's get started with how to set up and play first thing you'll do is roll out the game mat in the center of the table so it's like a neoprene mat that uh, you just roll up when you put it in the box and roll it out so let me see if I can get there we go there it is Next you get your six starter shops. They have this like white background or white colored uh, backing. And you'll place them uh, on any of the shop spaces uh, on the mat. So something like this. Again, these are the shop spaces on the mat. You could just put them next to any of the shop spaces. I just laid mine out uh, how they show as an example in the rule book. Then you get your starter artisan dragons. Those again have the cream colored background and this little horn with a banner icon. You'll flip those over and you'll put each one in the shop with the matching icon in the top left. So for instance, this one's got the potion. So you look for the shop that's got the potion in the top left, which would be portable potions. And you place it here where it's got the matching icon as can be seen there so we'll place that one on that shop again this one twig um, you look for the shop with the plant icon so that is that one and then you just place it on the space with the starter horn so I'll do that with the other ones okay so here I've got pan you can see the bread icon matches you saw me place twig here wing nut goes with the iron matching iron uh, here brightness matches the gem there you saw me place this one and hickory of course the meat icon matches and again you just place it where the matching icon here goes so that's where the starting artisan dragons go next you'll place your goods in piles off to the side you got crystals iron potions meat, bread, and plant uh, goods. Next you'll take your shop deck. These are the ones that don't have the cream colored background. The ones with the cream or white back, or, you know, backing were the starter shops. The rest of this deck is your regular shops. You'll sort, sort them into piles based on the icons in the top left so you know you'd put all the potions all the iron meat so I'm going to sort these into the different piles so you'll end up with a pile for bread a pile for meat pile for iron pile for crystals pile for plants pile for potions and then one pile that has all the other icons in it next you'll Flip each of these piles face down. After you've got all seven piles face down, you'll shuffle each pile individually and draw one uh, from each of the goods piles. So you'll shuffle them and draw one for, from each one, and then you'll draw, you'll shuffle this pile and draw four from the the pile that had the icons that were not the goods icons. Alright, so I've shuffled and drawn one from each of the goods stacks and four from the other stacks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The rest of these will just go back in the box unused. Your stack of ten shops you will shuffle together. After that's shuffled, you just place it somewhere to the sh side of the uh, game mat. That will be your shop deck. 
Next you'll take your Artisan Dragon deck. That's the one with the brown back. Remember your starting Artisan Dragons have the cream or white colored back. The regular Artisan Dragons have the brown back. Then depending on the number of players, if you're playing with uh, two player, and you'll see again they have the icons for the type of goods on them as well. If you're playing with two players, you'll remove uh, 12 cards, two of each uh, goods type. If you're playing with three players, you'll remove six cards, one of each good type. And if you're playing with more than three players, you don't have to remove any cards. So I'm going to be setting up for three players. So I'm going to look through here and remove one of each goods type. So here's the six I'm removing. I'm removing a crystal, a plant, an iron, a bread, a meat, and a potion. Those will just go back in the box. The rest of your artisan dragons you'll shuffle up. After you've shuffled those up, you'll place them on the space marked on the mat. And then you'll reveal five and place them in the park here. Next you'll take your deck with this backing. These are your fancy dragons. You'll shuffle those up and place them in the space here next to the fountain. Next you'll choose either your purple enchantment deck or your gold enchantment deck. The rules say they suggest using the purple enchantment deck for your first game so that's what uh, I'm going to do and we'll just place the gold enchantment deck back in the box but in future games you can choose which one you want to play with. Shuffle that deck and place it in the space with the icon here on the player mat and then you'll reveal the top five enchantments and place them on these spaces here. like so. Each player then chooses a player token. I'm going to be using blue, red, and green. They'll take the matching player aid and the matching reputation marker. Forgot one step earlier when you uh, place the goods in piles next to the board. You should take your gold coins and place them in the fountain. Alright, let me get back to the player setup. So you so far you've got your player token dragon, reputation marker, player aid. You gather up the reputation markers and mix them up and randomly choose one to be your first player. I'm just going to choose the blue to be the first player like I normally do. <laughs> Red will be my second player and green will be my third player, but uh, you would normally mix them up and choose one to be your first player. All right, then you take all the reputation markers and place them near the reputation track, near the number one over here. You deal each player three artisan dragons into their hand, like so. Then you'll deal each player two fancy dragons. They'll look at them, choose one to keep, and one that they will return to the bottom of the uh, fancy dragon deck. All right, I've done that for each of my players. So each player should have three artisan dragons and one fancy dragon in their hand. If playing with four or more players, uh, the fourth, fifth player will each take one good of their choice uh, and put it into their play area to start the game. And that complete setup. We're all ready to go. So let's start uh, with how to play. All right, how do we play? Well, the goal of the game is basically to get the most reputation as you 
visit the shops, uh, place artisan dragons, uh, score off your fancy dragons, uh, cast enchantments at shops, you'll gain reputation and your goal is to have the most reputation at the end of the game. So let's get started on uh, what a player can do on their turn. Alright, on a player's turn they must visit a, a shop. It has to be a different shop than the shop they were at on their previous turn. They visit a shop by placing their uh, dragon token on the shop they want to visit. If another player or players are already at a shop that you want to visit, then you have to give those players each one good from your personal supply. If you don't have the goods to give them, then you can't visit that shop. Once you've chosen the shop that you're visiting, you then choose whether you want to gather at that shop or whether you want to enchant that shop. So let's first talk about gathering. We'll say you chose to gather at this shop. When you gather, the first thing you'll do is you'll gather one good of the type shown here, or it could be a coin, or if it has the image of an artisan dragon there, you'd, you'd gain one artisan dragon. So you gain uh, one good, one coin, one artisan dragon, whatever, whatever is pictured in the top left of that shop. If the shop had this icon, then you get to gain one good of your choice. You then also gain a good from each artisan dragon at the shop. So in this case, um, this dragon is here. So you would gain one plant for the shop and one plant for this artisan dragon. So you would take those two plant goods and place them in your area. If you visited the shop and there were two artisan dragons here, well, you'd get one plant good, one plant good, and one iron good, and place them in your area. Also, if the shop was enchanted, we'll talk about and we'll talk about enchanting later. But sometimes an enchantment will be at the top of a shop, and then you would gain the good as shown there also. So when if you moved to this shop and gathered and it looked like this, you'd gain one bread, two plant, and one iron good. But in this case, at the beginning of the game, there's just one artisan dragon there. So if you visited this shop, you would get two plant goods as shown and put them in your uh, play area. All right, after you've gathered goods, the next thing you can do at the shop um, when you're gathering is you can place an artisan dragon there from your hand. So this player, you know, he's got these three artisan dragons in your hand. You can place one there as long as you have one um, that has an icon that matches one of the available spots here. So to fill this spot, you'd have to have an artisan dragon with a plant or a bread icon on its top left. Or you could fill this spot if you had one that has a bread icon. They can be filled in any order. order. It doesn't have to be filled from left to right. The icon on the far right here is the reward you'll gain when you place that dragon. So, for instance, this player has these three artists and dragons. Um, one is a potion, one is a crystal. Well, none of these icons are a or, or potion or a crystal, but he does have one with a bread icon. So he could place this dra artisan dragon either in this slot because it could take a plant or a bread or he could put it in this depending on what reward he wanted. This one gives you a coin and coins are uh, basically they are wild for a good. You can use them uh, to pay for any good and they're also uh, used for scoring at the end. So you could place this one here to gain a coin or this player could place it here to gain a fancy dragon from the top of the fancy dragon. So we'll just say in this example he would he's going to place it here. He gets a coin from the fountain and places that in his play area. When you're gathering you can only place one uh, dragon at the shop that you're visiting. Even if you had two that you know would if even if he had one that could fill another slot in his hand. You can't place that. You can only place one dragon. If when you are uh, placing your dragon you fill the shop, you filled all the slots on that shop. 
So for instance, if it looked like this and you visited the shop, you gathered your goods, you place your one artisan dragon, now that shop is filled. Whenever you fill a shop on your turn, um, at any point on your turn, if you fill a shop, you'll draw one shop and place it face down on one of the empty spots uh, in the town. And later at the end of your turn, you'll flip that over. But right now, you don't get to look at it. So you can place it in any, any of the empty slots. So you could place it here. And then again, at the end of your turn, you'll flip that over. And that will make another slot available for you. Or for all the players. Again, that happens any time on your turn that you end up filling up all the slots at a shop. All right, so again... Um, when you visit a shop, if you've chosen to gather there, the first thing you'll do is gain any goods from the shop, from any artisan dragons already there, from any enchantment. Then you can place an artisan dragon there. Um, if you have one that has a matching icon that the shop requires, gain the reward. Next thing you can do is fire up one dragon. So when you fire up one dragon, you, ch you choose one of these and do the ability shown at the bottom here where it shows the fire icon. So if there's two dragons, you can choose one to fire up. This one, if you choose this one, you get to draw one artisan dragon. Whenever something lets you draw an artisan dragon, you can either draw one from the top of the deck here or choose one from the park. If you chose to fire up this dragon, you gift another good a good to another player and gain two reputation so if this player decided to choose that dragon to fire up they could give one of their uh, plant goods they have to another player of their choice and then they would get to gain two reputation so they would move their reputation marker up two spaces on the reputation track and then finally after you fired up a dragon you can uh, use a shop ability if there is one. Now none of these starter shops have a shop ab ability but uh, let me find one just to show you one as an example. So later in the game if this shop was placed you can see it has a shop ability here in this bar. Um, you would get to pay two bread to draw two artisan dragons from the park. So again when you gather at a shop you get to gain goods and coins or artisan dragons that are listed on the icons um, from the dragons in the shop and the enchantments there. Then you get to place one artisan dragon if you have one that matches the icons in an open slot. Then you get to fire up one artisan dragon in that shop. And then you can use the shop ability there if there is one. Alright, so that's what you do at, uh, if you gather at a shop. The other option instead of gathering at a shop is to enchant a shop. So when you move to a shop, if you choose to enchant that shop instead of gathering at that shop, you'll choose one of the enchantments here uh, in the row. It has to match the icon of the shop. So of all these that are here, enchantments that are here in this row, only these two have the plant uh, icon. So though, if you moved here, you would have to choose one of those to enchant this shop. You then have to pay the goods cost shown on the enchantment you choose to use. So for instance, if you chose this enchantment, you'd have to be able to pay one potion good, two iron goods, and three crystal goods. If you have to have that in your personal supply, if you have that, you pay it, you know, put those uh, back in the uh, general supply. Then you take that enchantment, you gain the reward shown. In this case, the reward for this one is six reputation so you would get to move your marker up uh, six spaces on the reputation tip track and then you place this en enchantment up at the top of the shop like so so in the future when somebody gathers there they will gain an extra plant um, from that enchantment now you can't enchant a shop that already has an enchantment And you can see different enchantments have different rewards. This one gives you four reputation, plus you get to draw one artisan dragon. Again, when it just shown like that, you can draw it from the top or from the park. Um, this one is a little different. It depends on how many times uh, that you pay the cost here. That depends on the reward. 
So if you just pay one meat and one bread one time, you get no reputation. But if you pay two meat and two bread, you would get two reputation. If you pay three meat and three bread, you would get four reputation. And if you paid four meat and four bread, you would get eight reputation. So for each set of two, you get the reward shown. So if you just have one set, you know, you get nothing here. But the more sets you have, the more reward you get. This one, again, you would pay these goods and gain six reputation. <clears throat> and this last one is similar to the other one we showed where you would pay sets of these goods. The more that you can, more sets of two you pay the more uh, reputation you gain but remember the uh, enchantment you choose the icon on that uh, enchantment must match the icon on the shop that you are enchanting after you've cast your enchantment gained the rewards tucked it behind the the shop that you're enchanting you then get to fire up all the dragons that are at that shop. So remember when you gathered, you only get to choose one dragon to fire up um, and use its fire up ability. When you enchant a shop, you get to fire up any or all of the dragons there that you want to. So in this case, you would get to do this one where you could gift a good to another player to gain two reputation. And you could do this one to draw uh, one artisan dragon from the top of the deck or the park if there was another one here you would get to fire it up as well again you don't have to fire up all of them but you can if you want to if you are doing an ability like this that says gift a good to another player of course this one um, since it doesn't specify a good you can you can uh, gift a good of your choice you can always gift a coin in place of a good since a coin is a wild it can be used as any good if it does say a specific good, um, then you have to give that specific good or a coin. I will just mention that some abilities um, may allow you to reserve an enchantment. When you do that, you take one of the enchantments from the row and place it in your play area. And then later in the future, um, if you are casting an enchantment, you can cast one of the ones from your row or you can cast the one that you have reserved in front of you. Nobody else can cast the one that you have reserved in front of you. Alright, so after you've visited a shop, either gathered there or enchanted there, then you'll end your turn. When you end your turn, the first thing you'll do is flip up any uh, shop that you uh, placed face down because you filled up uh, all the slots at another shop. So you would just flip one over like, like so if you had any face down. Alright, the next step uh, at the end of your turn is to check your limits. You can only have a maximum of seven of each type of good in your personal supply. If you have more than seven of any type of good, you have to discard or return back to the supply until you only have seven of um, a max of seven of each type and you can only have a maximum of six uh, artisan dragons in your hand if you have more than six you have to discard the excess to the bottom of the artisan dragon deck then next at the end of your turn you'll refill any if there are less than five dragons in the park because uh, you've taken one or more, um, then you refill them from the top of the artisan dragon deck. If you've enchanted and taken an enchantment from the row of enchantments, you then draw a new enchantment and replace uh, any that are missing. I should mention when you're checking limits, there's no limit on the number of coins you can have, only on the number of goods you can have. There's also no limit on the number of fancy dragons that you can have. We haven't talked about those yet, but we will shortly. But there is no limit on the number of fancy dragons that you can have in your hand or in your play area. Once you've done all those things, then that ends your turn. And play will proceed clockwise to, um, to the next player. And then they'll have the same opportunity to visit a shop either gather or enchant. And all these steps that I've mentioned are shown right here on this handy player aid. 
so it shows on your turn you'll visit a shop give all players at the shop a gift of one good we talked about that then you choose to either gather or enchant if you gather you gain goods coins or dragons listed there you may place one artisan dragon and gain the reward shown you may fire up one artisan dragon there and may use the shop ability if any or if you enchant you choose an enchantment that matches the shop icon pay the goods to cast the enchantment gain the rewards for casting that enchantment and then tuck the enchantment behind the shop and then you can fire up any number of artisan dragons that are at that shop then you'll end your turn by flipping over any new shops that you had placed if you filled up slots on another shop then you'll refill the park and the enchantments if you ended up uh, taking any of those and then it just shows that you have a maximum of each good type of seven and a maximum of six uh, dragons artisan dragons in hand so this pretty much shows you exactly what you can do on your turn all right let's take a minute to talk about fancy dragons as i mentioned there's no limit to the number of fancy dragons you have there's two types there's Sun dragons, they have this sun symbol in the top right, as you can see there. There are also moon dragons that have this crescent moon symbol, as you can see here. The sun dragons you can score during the game um, on, on any time on your turn when you fulfill the requirements shown there. The moon dragons are uh, used to score during in-game scoring if you've met the requirements there during in-game scoring. Let's take a look at this one sun dragon. So it says, after enchanting, gain two reputation per enchantment of the same type in town. So if you casted a plant enchantment and there were, you know, three other plant enchantments on shops in the town, you could play this and gain two reputation for each um, enchantment of that same type in town. Once you've played a uh, sun dragon into your play area and gained the reward, you can't gain that reward again. It's a one-time thing. You start the game with one fancy dragon in your hand, but you can gain more um, from rewards and other abilities during the game. All right, let's talk about uh, how the game ends. If at any time the Artisan uh, Dragon deck or the Enchantment deck runs out, that triggers the end of the game. At that point, at that point each player will get one more turn, including the player that uh, drew the last card from whichever deck uh, emptied that triggered the game, the end of the game. Once all players have had the, their final turn, um, then you'll score for any coins that you have in your uh, personal supply. You gain one reputation for each coin that you have in your personal supply. And then you, you can score any of the moon dragons that you have in your hand as long as you meet the requirements. So we'll just look at this one. You'd gain one reputation for every two bred artisan dragons in town. So you'd look at all the shops that are in the town and for every two bred artisan dragons in there you would gain uh, a reputation. And then you'd gain uh, three additional reputation if there were more bred artisan dragons in town than any other dragon type in town. And if it's tied for the most, then you still gain that bonus reputation. After that, whichever player has the most reputation is the winner. In the case of a tie between the tied players, whichever one, whichever player has the most artisan dragons left in their hand would be the winner. If there's still a tie after that, then amongst the tied players, whichever one has the most goods in their personal supply would be the winner and if there's still a tie after that then the players the tied players just share the well-deserved victory all right with that i think we've pretty much covered most of the rules so why don't we set everything back up uh 
how it was right at the beginning of the game, and we'll do a few example turns. All right, I think we have the game set back up to how it was right after we did set up. We'll start with blue player. We'll say they were the one that we drew their icon or their reputation marker, so they're the first player. So we'll stay with, start with blue, so he's got to visit a shop. And we'll just uh, go to the same shop we showed in our rules overview. We'll say he's going to go to the Hello Nursery. He's going to gather. He can't really enchant right now because you really need to, need to gather some goods that you can pay the enchantment cost before enchanting. So he's going to gather. That's going to give him uh, one, two plant goods. So I'll get those, put those in his play area. Okay, then he will, now he gets to place a dragon if he has one that matches the icons. We know he has this one. So he will place it there and he gains one coin as a reward. So that will go in his play area. Uh, next he can fire up one fancy dragon there. Uh, we'll say he's going to do this one and just draw a, or not fire up one fancy dragon, fire up one artisan dragon. He's going to fire up this one and draw one artisan dragon. So he'll just draw from the top of the deck. That goes into his hand. And then he may use the shop ability, but there isn't any, so that's going to end his turn. So then uh, he didn't uh, fill up any shops, so he doesn't uh, need to flip any over because he didn't get to place any. He certainly doesn't have more than seven of any type of good and only has three uh, artisan dragons, so the maximum of six. So this player's turn, uh, there's nothing else for them to do. So they'll end their turn and go in clockwise order to the next player. All right, so we'll come to the red player. We'll say uh, she, you know, she could go to the same uh, shop here that the blue player went to, the Hello Nursery. And if she did and gathered there, then she'd get two plants and a bread. But, you know, we're looking at her dragon. She's got a couple of meat dragons, so she probably better go where she can place uh, a, a meat dragon at. So I think, uh, you know, she could place one here. You can see because they require a meat. These two both require a meat. Um, we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll come up here to critical roles. That's where she's going to go. All right, she decides she's going to gather because, again, she doesn't have any goods yet at this point to uh, do any enchantment. So she'll collect two bread goods. Put those in her play area. Then she gets to place one artisan dragon. Um, you should can place one here that's either got a bread or a meat or place one here that's got a meat. Um, so she's got two that are meat. She'll place uh, old Skewart here. And well, just to see something different, we'll place it here. The reward is a fancy dragon. So she will take fancy dragon as a reward. Um, this one, you know, she needs to pay five bread to gain three reputation and two coins. The other one she has is a moon dragon, so she can't use that one until scoring at the end. All right, then we get to fire up one of these dragons here. So this one we can draw one uh, dragon from the deck or the park, or this one we can place one dragon in town. So that means we get to place one of our artisan dragons at any of the shops in town. The dragon we place still has to match an icon on one of the slots in the shop we're placing it, and we still get to gain the reward. So maybe she wants to place Frostfire, and she can go anywhere there's a crystal. Uh, so we'll just say maybe she wants to place Frostfire here, and she'll gain a coin as a reward. So let's take a coin, put it in our area. She could have placed uh, Flambe there and placed him here, 
and filled that shop and then she would have got to flip over one of the or get to place one of the shops and then flip it over at the end of her turn but that's not what she did um, and now she could use a shop ability if any there there aren't any uh, to use so again now this player would end her turn she would flip over any new shops that she had placed if she had done so refill the park or enchantments if any of those had been taken and then just check that they're not over their max of any good or artisan dragons. They're not, so that's going to end this player's turn. And they will now, now we'll move on to the green player. Alright, so now the green player has to choose a shop. The green player has no goods at this time, so they couldn't go uh, to where either of these other players are. Because remember, they would have to pay them a good, gift them a good to go there. Since the player, the green player has no goods. They could not go to either one of these, so they have to choose a different shop. So, we'll say the green player decides to come up here to Smith Mart. Now, choose whether to gather or enchant. Well, since they have no goods, they're certainly not going to be able to enchant. So you can see, you usually won't be able to start enchanting until a little bit into the game. The first few turns you're going to be gathering. And then once you've gathered some goods, then uh, as the game goes on, then you'll start enchanting. But they're going to go there. They're going to gather, so they get to get two iron. So they'll take two iron goods, put them in their play area. All right, now they get to place a dragon and gain the reward. Well, this one can take an iron dragon or one with an iron icon, a potion icon, or this one can take a potion icon. She does have thistle here or this player has thistle here so they'll place them and they'll place them here that is potion so potion can place them and the reward is a coin so this player gets a coin remember the coins can be wild for any good and they also uh, score uh, reputation for you at the end all right now uh, this player gets to fire up one of these dragons here so wing nut Let's them gain two of one good from the shop or uh, one of the dragons here. So they could take either two iron or two iron or two potions. Or this one lets you swap this dragon with another uh, artisan dragon in town. So that means that one of the other shops, not in the park, um, they could swap uh, this one with one of the artisan dragons in the uh, in one of the other shops and then they get to fire up that dragon when you swap when you use uh, that ability to swap with another artisan dragon in town so swapping with another one in uh, in another shop then you just ignore the the icon so you could swap with anyone even if it didn't if the slot they were in didn't have a potion icon, for instance, uh, well that one does, but we'll just say uh, this one. You could swap Thistle over here and swap Hickory over here, even though there's no meat icon here or no potion icon here. You can swap, it doesn't matter, but then you, you don't gain any reward uh, for the one you swap in place, but you do get to fire up the one you swapped with, you get to fire it up and do whatever its fire up ability is. So I think we'll fire up Wingnut here and gain two of one good from the shop or from one of the dragons here. We're going to gain uh, two potion from the thistle there. So we take two potion goods, put them in our play area. And then we could use the shop ability if there was one, but there isn't. So then we just end our turn. Again, check our limits. Uh, replace any enchantment or dragon cards we took from the park. We didn't. And so we'll now end this player's turn. Alright, we'll do uh, one more round probably. Okay, so we're back to the blue player. So they need to visit, visit a shop. Um, we'll say maybe... Maybe the blue player, he's going to come over here and visit portable potions. So he gets one potion, another potion, and a crystal. Um, oh, he's going to gather. He's not going to 
He's not going to enchant, so he's going to gather. So he gets two potions and a crystal. So he's got those there. Then he gets to place a dragon. He's got Moonbeam, who has the crystal icon, which matches here. For their reward, they'll gain a fancy dragon, so they're going to place that. They're going to gain a fancy dragon. Let's see what they got. A uh, moon dragon, so that'll be for scoring at the end. They did fill this shop, so now they take the top shop up the deck. They don't look at it, and they choose one area to place it. We'll just say they're going to place it right here. Okay, now they get to fire up one dragon here. Um, both of these are the same. They get to uh, gain three different goods. I think that's what they're going to do. So we'll just say they'll fire up this dragon and gain three different goods. So they will get a meat, a bread, and an iron. So three different goods. Okay, now they could use a shop ability if there is one. There isn't one. Uh, there's no shop ability here. So now they flip over any new shops. So now they flip over this one and reveal it. They don't have to replace any enchantments or uh, dragons from the park. They don't have more than seven of any good, and they don't have more than six artists and dragons. So that's just going to end their turn, and nothing else for them to do. Alright, we'll come back to the red player, um, just to show something different. Uh, they're going to take their turn, so they're going to visit a shop. They'll visit this new shop, the Full Plate Buffet. Um, the only thing they get to gain there is one meat. Well, they're going to gather here. Again, they don't have enough goods to do an enchantment, so they're going to gather, so they get to gain one meat. So they'll come over here and gain that, put it in their play area. All right, now they get to place a dragon, so they'll take Flambe. Um, he's got a meat icon, so they'll place him here. Their reward is three reputation. So now if somebody finally is moving up on the reputation track, so they move up, she'll move up three there. All right, then she can fire up uh, one artisan dragon there. The only one there is here, place a dragon in town. Well, unfortunately, at this point, uh, she doesn't have any more dragons to place, so she can't do that. Um, but she can now use a shop ability. There is one. Gain one of each type of good. Pay one coin to do it again. So, so she gets to get one of each type of good. So a crystal, an iron, a potion a meat, a bread, and a plant. And then she could pay this coin to do that again. So I think that's what she's going to do. She'll pay the coin and so she will again gain a crystal, an iron, a potion, a meat, a bread, and a plant and put those in the play area. Now, she still doesn't have more than seven of any one type, but she's getting close with the bread. She's got three meats. All right. So that's gonna end her turn. She doesn't uh, need to flip over a shop because she didn't place one. She doesn't, we checked, she doesn't have more than seven of any good type. Certainly doesn't have more than six artists and dragons because she doesn't have any so that's going to end her turn we'll come back to the green player now all right the green player kind of liked that ability that they saw the red player do so they're going to visit the same shop as the red player they do have to gift them a good so they'll gift them a uh, they'll gift them a iron to go there and now they're going to gather there as well so first they get to meet. So they'll take those. Then they get to place a dragon uh, if they can. So uh, there's no bread icon here but there is a plant icon right here. So they will place this dragon here and they get to gain one coin as a reward. Alright. Uh, next they get to fire up one dragon there. So they could 
place a dragon in town or gift a good to another player to gain two reputation. Uh, we'll say they're going to do that. They're going to gift a meat to this player. And now they get to gain two reputation. So they go there. Alright, so they fired up a dragon. Now they can use a shop ability. They are going to use this one where they gain one of each type of good. Alright, so I've gathered that. And now they'll pay the coin so they can do that again. Alright, so they paid the coin, did that again. Now they don't uh, um, have more than seven of each, but they do have quite a few of each. They don't have them, they only got one artisan dragon, so not more than six. And so that's going to end their turn. And I'll just do the blue player's turn here one time um, so just so I can show an enchantment and then I'll wrap it up alright so we're back to the blue player uh, they're here they're gonna visit critical roles here and instead of gathering they're going to enchant so they have to choose an enchantment that matches the shop so one with a bread there's only one with a bread here it's the creme brulee so to pay for that enchantment they need one iron, two potions, and three plants. So we'll come over here, they've got one iron, two potions, and they only have two plants, but they do have a coin which is a wild so they can pay that. So that's what it costs, one iron, two potion, and three plants, so they've got that. So we'll put those into the back into the supply. And we'll put their coin back here so now they've paid for that enchantment they gain the reward which is six uh, reputation so we'll move them up to the six there on the reputation track and then this gets tucked behind this shop and now that'll give an extra bread when somebody gathers there and that shop can no longer be enchanted in the future Okay, but now they uh, get to fire up any number of uh, dragons at that shop. So they get to draw one uh, artisan dragon, so they can draw it from the top or from the park. We'll just say they're going to draw it, uh, we'll just have them draw it from the park, so that goes into their hand. And remember, they get to fire up any number of them there, so they'll also do this one, which is place a dragon in town. They will place Cinnabon here at the Hello Nursery, which is going to give them a reward of a fancy dragon. So they'll take that one. Again, it's a moon dragon, so good for scoring at the end of the game. But you'll notice that also filled up a shop. So now they draw, draw the top shop and you know, just place it somewhere in an empty shop slot. Okay, that's all the dragons there that they can fire up. So now they'll end their turn. So the first thing they'll do is flip over any shops that they uh, placed. So that one will get flipped over. Uh, next they'll refill the park. They did take one from the park, so they'll refill that. And they also need to refill an enchantment because they cast an enchantment. Then they just check that they're not over their limits. They don't have more than seven of any good type. They don't have more than six artisan dragons. So they're not over any limits. So that will end their turn. And then we'd go on to the red player. And that's how the game goes. You keep going until, again, some player draws either the last uh, dragon from the artisan dragon deck or some player draws the last enchantment from the enchantment deck. That'll trigger the end of the game each player will get one more turn including the one that triggered the end of the game and then you will uh, check where you are on the reputation track um, then for each gold you have or each coin you have you can turn those in for one uh, additional reputation and then you score you know any of your moon dragons and get reputation for them which is uh, Two reputation if you have at least three iron goods in your personal supply, you know, which he did if this was at the end of the game. And then you get an additional three reputation if you have the most iron goods 
in your supply more than uh, any other player has in their personal supply. So that's again how, kind of how these score. But uh, that's how you play the game. Sh should have a pretty good idea from watching those examples. Again, I've only played this by myself one time solo, but it looks like a good family game. I think it'll be fun. I hope I can get my family to play it. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.